And welcome once again to our daily devotional. This is Reverend Phil Anderson of Oakland United Methodist Church in Kansas Avenue United Methodist Church here in Topeka, Kansas. Hey, hope you have about 10 minutes to spend with me this morning as we're going to go ahead and continue our daily devotionals based upon the lectionary readings for this past Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter, April 19th, 2020. This will be our final reading from that lectionary for that particular Sunday. We're just doing a few things different this week. Hopefully you'll enjoy them. And today our scripture reading comes to us from the Gospel of John chapter 20 verses 19 to 31 but before we read let's pray shall we father we thank you so much for this time together where we can listen to your word through through the holy scriptures that you've given us lord i ask your special touch upon each one here that's listening today and may you bless this time in jesus name amen well let's go right into our scripture today shall we john 20 verses 19 to 31 and we read in the name of the father the son and the holy ghost when it was evening on that day the first day of the week and the doors of the house Where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Rejoice out Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. There's a lot of characters in the Bible, aren't there? If you think about all the different people we know through our study of scriptures through the years. We know of Adam. We know of Moses. We know of Abraham, David, Daniel, Jeremiah, Job, on and on. And then the New Testament's full of them. Of course, Jesus, Mary's mother, Mary Magdalene, Martha. Zacchaeus, and all the disciples, Peter, John, Andrew, Philip, James, and here we have one that we don't read a whole lot about, but he's certainly prominent, and that is Thomas. What do we do with Thomas? Now, Thomas may just be a little too honest here (laughs) because he has struggled really grasping that Jesus Christ raised from the dead, even though Jesus had been predicting it for a long time. It's funny, you can tell people stuff, but they're not always going to get it. Thomas apparently didn't get it until it was pretty far into the whole situation. Then he started kind of trying to figure it all out. What happened to the Lord? Obviously, they saw him on the cross. Obviously, by now, they all know that the tomb was empty on the third day. No one's fessing up and saying someone stole the body. So what happened? But Thomas still hasn't figured out. And there have been a lot of reports that Jesus Christ has come back. Maybe it's one of those things that Thomas just thought, this is too good to be true. I'm just not going to set myself up for disappointment. Because I had tried before to follow Christ and had really put all my desires of my hopes and my aspirations and my dreams into following him. And then all of a sudden he's gone and, you know, maybe he just felt burned. I don't know what was going through Thomas's mind. There are people there today that say, you know, a good doubt is it can be healthy. And I've really struggled with that. I'll be honest with you. I, I just never have seen a whole lot of merit in doubting. But... Some people do say that it's a good thing, and maybe if it helps you get closer to Christ, then I would say 
it is a good thing. If your if your doubt comes from the sincere desire to believe in Christ, then it's a good thing. And I think that's where Thomas's doubt came from. I think it came from the sincere desire to follow Christ. And so, why else would he have still been with the other disciples, right? If he if he had given up totally, why would he have not? Why would he have still been hanging around the disciples here after Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection? So I got to I've got to preface this by saying I think Thomas had the right motive. And I believe through this, again, as we've been saying about the COVID crisis, how God can take one situation that we think on the surface doesn't look real promising or real successful or real full of hope, and he can turn around and make something really good out of it. And I think this is what happened here because we have this story all these years. Again, we look down at Thomas and call him Doubting Thomas. How many of you have ever heard that phrase, Doubting Thomas? He's a Doubting Thomas. It's kind of gotten into our secular vernacular as much as it is anything. And then someone just won't believe, even though they just need to take that step. But Thomas did doubt, obviously. And he was the one who said that if he was not able to put his finger into the nail-pierced hands of his Lord Jesus Christ, or to put his finger in the side where they gashed Jesus when he was hanging on the cross after he died with a big sword, then he wasn't going to believe. And so finally Jesus appears. And can you picture the expression on Thomas's face? I, I can just literally picture him freezing. And his mouth drops open. His eyes stay glazed over and go, my Lord and my God, it is you. Did he need to put his finger in Jesus' hand at that point? No. <laughs> Did he need to put his hand in the side where Jesus' body was gashed by a sort of a Roman soldier while he was hanging on the cross? No. The doubt gave way to belief. And that, friends, is the whole key. If you have doubt, find Jesus, be, become a person who puts yourself in his presence, and you will believe. I'll tell you what, if Thomas had not put himself in that position where he could see Jesus, he may never have come to complete belief. We have to position ourselves as people, whether you're a longtime Christian or a person that's just out there seeking, you'd like to believe, but you just can't seem to do it. Put yourself in the position of, of Jesus Christ. You know, there's a lot of people who say, I just can't believe in Jesus, but have they spent the time to get to know him? Have they exposed themselves to him? Have they put themselves in a position of letting Jesus Christ reveal himself to them? Because if not, then you really can't say you, you can't believe in somebody that you don't know. If you at least get to know him, you have a better chance of believing, I would think, at that point, right? So I would just encourage all of us to put ourselves in a position so we could be in the presence of Jesus and where we could see him, the risen Christ, and say to him, just like Thomas did, my Lord and my God. That's when we know we believe. Jesus Christ walked this earth fully God fully human. He went to the cross as the perfect, spotless, sinless son of God so that he could take all the sins of the world upon himself. And in exchange, he would give the righteousness of himself, the righteousness that comes from God to everyone who would believe in him by faith. And that's how it is. And Jesus clearly stated at the end, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. So that's my prayer, that we would believe in Jesus today. Amen. Let's conclude this devotional with prayer. Father, I am so thrilled to know that you are alive and well. Lord, no matter what's going on around us, you're in control. And Lord, that you are an ever-present source of strength to those of us who believe in you. Now I pray, Lord, that you would reveal yourself to those who may be on the fence post, Lord, help them to come to believe in you as well. We ask this today in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks again for being with us today at KAUMC.church. This is Reverend Phil Anderson, pastor of Oakland United Methodist Church in Kansas Avenue United Methodist Church, inviting you to be with us again tomorrow for another devotional. May God richly bless you today is our prayer.